What's up guys? Hello. Welcome to my YouTube channel. <laughs> I'm gonna edit that out. So, we figured since this is an elective series, we should probably talk about our elective. A bit more. Rather than... Because uh, so far it's just been traveling. Traveling, temples. Basically, we're here in Japan for six weeks elective. Uh, I started on two weeks of gastroenterology, followed by four weeks of anaesthetics. So I've done four weeks of neurology and two weeks of neurosurgery. Yeah. Um, and now we're in our penultimate week. So it's so our one more week after this, and then we're done. Mm -hmm. So. How's it been? Yeah, I've really enjoyed it. So I finished four week, my four week block of neurology last week. Um, and yeah, I moved on to neurosurgery on Monday. I think it's quite good to have two week blocks because you can pack a lot in. Whereas four weeks, I don't know how you're finding it with anaesthetics, it's quite long. Yeah. And so it becomes a little repetitive. Um, but otherwise it's been really good. So. A typical kind of week for me in neurology is every morning there's a morning conference which is basically um, similar to a board round in the UK so where they discuss any kind of inpatients that have come in overnight um, they discuss any patients that have been unwell then afterwards we usually do a medical round so you get assigned teams so in the hospital or in the ward, there's like a Parkinson's team, two Parkinson's teams, and there's um, a neuroimmunology team, and then there's a stroke team as well, or like um, cerebrovascular team. Um, and I was assigned the neuroimmunology team. So um, I suppose I saw more, more patients than other people did that has things like MS and Guillain-Barre, but I also still saw a lot of Parkinson's because Gen I'm not sure if like people know, but Gentendo is really famous for Parkinson's, the hospital, um, well, movement disorders. So then we'd go on a, a medical round and each consultant is assigned the patients that they admit. And so usually it's about 10 patients um, and it consists of literally going in, seeing the patient, asking how they're feeling and then leaving so they don't do many examinations and it's a lot quicker than in the UK where often medical rounds can last like hours but I think also because they don't have to see every patient on the ward is probably why but it's very very quick after that it all depends on what's on your schedule so sometimes I have some lectures on like Parkinson's and strokes and like neuroimmunology things so you may be scheduled one of those. And if not, if there's a lumbar puncture or any other procedure going on, I'd often go and watch that. Um, then in the afternoon, it's all very dependent on the day. So again, you can sometimes have a lecture, sometimes there'll be more lumbar punctures going on. Two times I saw a brain autopsy, which was really um, interesting. And he was, or the doctor who was doing the autopsy was a neurologist, so he was a neuropathologist. So he had his own patients that he saw on the wards, did ward rounds, but also did all the brain autopsies. So that was interesting. But every Friday we'd have um, what they call like grand round. So in, for an hour in the morning, they would take two patients from the ward. Um, and the consultants would examine them in front of you so you can kind of learn examinations that way and they'll show you um, examination findings of particularly interesting cases on the ward which I thought was um, really good you can learn a lot you can see a lot um, and they often try and show you the scans as well and then you go and you do the professor round afterwards which is all of the new patients that have been admitted that week get seen by the professor and if you're um, an observer, so like me, so on your elective, or if you're a medical student, then you are given a, a you're an assigned your patient that you then have to present to the professor at grand round. So basically telling them like, why they're in, what their history is, past medical history, examination findings, and your treatment plans. So that's overall kind of one week in neurology, and a lot of the same things happen in the four weeks that. I was there, except from on a Wednesday I did used to go to an outpatient clinic, um, 
which if you're from the UK, the outpatient clinics are very different to the UK. Um, typically, when I've sat in neurology clinics, consultants will get through maybe like six to ten patients, whereas they have like 35 patients in an afternoon and can have up to like 70 patients plus in a day. Just be with, oh my god, there's a Sorry. I'm eating fruit right now. I'm Insects around us. We're sat on the floor in a park. <laughs> so that's neurology. Um, and how did you find the elective? How'd, and what's the application like? How was the application process for you, Cal? It was easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of help. I knew I wanted to do neurology or neurosurgery, or both if I could. And I knew the places where I wanted to go. I even wanted to go to Australia um, and New Zealand, or I wanted to go to Japan, or somewhere like Taiwan. And I, so I looked online, I just kind of searched hospitals, so I kind of knew I wanted to be in Tokyo, so I looked at um, hospitals in Tokyo. And then I also looked at, because I knew I wanted to see neurology, the best neurology hospitals in the world, and Tokyo was one of the top 10. And, um, sorry, Juntendo was one of the top 10 and when I saw it was in Tokyo I just looked on the website to see if they had like an elective programme or an observership programme or any form of like contact details that I could contact to see if I could do one and they had a really good clinical observers website I think they have quite a few partners with like German universities and I think it's even Imperial or UCL that they're a partner with It was really quick wasn't it? Yours was really quick, yours came back within a week I think because neurology is a very like popular department. Um, mine came back like two weeks after I applied to say that we've got a place. So why don't you tell them about kind of your elective application process, um, how you found it and maybe tell them a bit more about gastroenterology yeah. um, and anaesthetics. So um, Chloe sent me the link to Gentendo application form and I filled it out. Yeah well. She filled out bits of it, and I filled out the rest. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... And what, so like, <clears throat> tell them the sorts of things you put on your application form, or like what they were asking you. So that, uh, for each department that you apply for, they want you to write um, a short paragraph about why you want to go to their department. So for gastro, I was just saying, oh, you know, I'm interested in gastro, and um, I'm aware of, like, how stomach cancer is a big issue in Japan, H. pylori infection, um, and I want to see that for myself and stuff. And then for anaesthetics, same thing really, just I have some experience um, in the UK of anaesthetics, I enjoy it and I've, I want to see what it's like over in Japan, so didn't, didn't have to write anything crazy, just a few lines. Some of the other applications that I actually apply for, I had to like upload a CV to show like I, get, I guess you were competing with people to like get that place. It didn't to me. It doesn't seem this is particularly competitive. Yeah. yeah um, that's that, yeah. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. Um, but it's important to say that it's, a, it's an observership, so you won't be allowed to actually touch patients um, and examine patients. It's important to say that they only accept um, applications. Um, three people a year from the uni that you're in, so you should apply really early, basically. Yeah. Um, read read the, the department description so you know what you're applying to, um, and you're not <laughs> going to something that you're not expecting, because I was expecting to be on a ward, um, but that wasn't the case. But I still enjoyed it, it was really good, so... Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell them what like, a typical day for gastro was and a typical day and week for anaesthetic was? In, well, for gastro, um, in the morning you would go and see um, a procedure like a colonoscopy clinic. Um, so you just, you'd just be observing, you can ask questions. Um, and then in the afternoon it would be another type of clinic. So it would be um, endo, submucosal endoscopic dissection or maybe a liver biopsy. And, and I don't know about you, but in my experience, um, I didn't actually talk to any patients or really get any any communication with patients at all. Um, well, one, because of the language barrier, but two, it was anaesthetic, so, you know, they were asleep. And for gastro, 
it, it wasn't what I expected. It, um, I wasn't based on a ward, it was all um, endoscopy based. So they were all having procedures. On a Wednesday, they have a lunchtime conference meeting. So you get a free lunch, a bento box, and um, you'll have to introduce yourself to the professor. Um, but he was really nice and um, um, just asked us like what we enjoy and why we chose Japan and stuff like that. So have some answers to questions like that prepared um, as to why you pick. Understand the medical system in your own country so that if they ask you questions about it, then you'd be able to answer them without being like, ooh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Once a week, we also had um, a seminar with the professor of, professor of public health or? Medical education. Medical, she was a professor and she sort of led these discussions that we had with the other international students. Um, and we would discuss things like the differences in health care across the country, across the world. Mm -hmm. um, and sort of how medical education is different, um, how the training processes are different, um, and just different like public health policies and things that um, mm -hmm. are different across the country. Um, so most of the other observers were from Germany. But there was also students from the Philippines, um, Australia, Eastern Europe. Taiwan. Um, yeah, they seem like they do get quite abroad quite a range of students so. and there's a few doctors as well so not all the observers are students they accept um doctors who just want to come for the experience mm -hmm. i think the other thing to note with gastroenterology which i was quite jealous of of you is that you had a very like structured and like detailed timetable so if you're interested in anesthetics um the department here is excellent i would say the professor that i was under was an expert in um, like her field of one lung ventilation. She developed her own. Um, what? She developed her own way to um, anaesthetize patients whilst ventilating just one lung. Um, I'm not really sure if they do that anywhere else, and, but she's kind of the pioneer of it. So you can choose from obstetric anaesthetics. So you might spend a couple of days with the obstetrics team. Um, you can do uh, just general anaesthetics. Um, in theatre. You can also spend some time um, in ICU, intensive care, and what's the other one? Oh, pain clinic. So you can you can join in on pain clinic as well, which is interesting. They do all sorts of um, uh, all sorts of nerve blocks and uh, different procedures and crazy infrared therapy and stuff like that. So that sounds interesting. So neurosurgery, I started that on Monday, um, so similar to neurology, go in at the morning conference and discuss either cases from the previous day that they've, um, patients that they've operated on and patients from that day that they're going to operate on. It's very quick, it lasts like 10 minutes, then after that you basically go into surgery. So they have two operating rooms in Gentendo that are dedicated to neurosurgery. Um, there's a timetable outside the theatres that you can Google Translate or there, are some, there were some really nice doctors that spoke good English and they would tell us like these are the cases on today. You could kind of figure out which is in which surgery is in which theatre. And it did, the, the really good thing is that it says how long the surgery should take and it has like a timeline in the theatres to show how long how long away through they are through the surgery so that was really good so in the morning i typically go with like the other clinical observer that was there who was really lovely it was really nice i'm really sad that she's gone and i've got a week on my own now <laughs> um we'd go we'd see what surgery we wanted to go to get changed and so then we'd watch the surgery so like on for example this week in the mornings i've seen like um, meningioma removal seen um, acoustic neuroma removal, I've seen a superficial temporal artery um, to middle cerebral artery bypass surgery where someone had like a completely stenosed internal carotid artery so they were bypassing that. I've seen endovascular surgery so for aneurysm um, coiling. Tuesday mornings it's always endovascular um, surgery so you go and watch the endovascular like coiling of aneurysms 
and then the rest of the week is just the same you go to the morning conference and you go to the main theatres so the really good things is that they have screens that are like dead that they put up and it's and it's dedicated for the students to watch so instead of having just the one screen in the UK that you get with like kind of micro surgery or endoscopy they have like four and they're like they purposely turn them on so students can watch it because obviously a lot of the surgeries you can't watch directly you can't like stand over someone's shoulder and you can't scrub in so you can't touch anything and you can't be close to the surgeon so they put up the screens for you to watch and they've also got um, a 3d kind of movie screen so when there's a lot of students in the operating room they put on that this massive like 3d screen where they um, project the surgery onto the screen and you put on these 3d glasses and it's like an immersive experience like you're seeing what the surgeon is seeing you're seeing the structures in 3d and it helps you and allows you to orientate yourself a bit more to understand what step of the surgery they're doing um, and kind of what the structures are because it can be very confusing so that was really good um i was like really impressed by that um and that was on my first day as well so i have loved neurosurgery but i've loved my placement since <laughs> um so that's a bit about the placement it's how you found japan as a country i've really enjoyed myself i think it's a completely different culture to the uk and the experience is like once in a lifetime experience we did some traveling before we came to tokyo as, as obviously you guys have seen and that was amazing um, it's very hot very humid although it's starting to cool down a bit now um, otherwise i loved it the food is amazing and it's not it's actually not been as expensive as everyone says so like we kind of went here expecting to be spending a lot and obviously we are spending a lot more than we would in the uk because most nights we have to eat out but you can eat out and you can get a decent meal for maybe six well 800 yen or less my phone just ran out of storage because <laughs> i've been filming so much um, so yeah. switched on to clothes so i I've, I've loved it here i think it was a really good choice to do my elective here rather than in australia even mm -hmm. though there's actually there's less bugs here than there would be in australia but i think um <laughs> Yeah, I think it was a really good choice. Yeah. How uh, about you? Yeah, I'd pick uh, Japan again just for like the culture and the food and um, it's totally different to what we're used to. So definitely um, very worthwhile experience and would recommend to any of you thinking about an elective, um, think about Japan. Um, if you are considering Japan and you have any questions, um, put them down in the comments. Um, I'll try and answer them. And uh, if you like my videos, uh, hit subscribe. That's what all the YouTubers say, isn't it? <laughs> it's subscribe. Alright, cheers. <laughs>